What's up, everybody? So, uh, I've been doing some research here and um, come across a popular misconception and I'm trying to determine if it's actual immunity or what they call qualified immunity or if it's nepotistic impunity. <laughs> um, so, I want to direct you to a higher revised code. Uh, 2744.03, uh, it's called Defenses, uh, as well as Immunities, and I want you to scroll down to uh, Section 6, it says, uh, in addition to any immunity or defense referred to uh, in Division A7 of this section, and in circumstances not covered in uh, by that division or sections 3314.07 and 3746.24 of the revised code, the employee is immune, immune from liability unless one of the following applies. A. Uh, the employee's acts or omissions were manifestly outside the scope of the employee's employment or official responsibilities. Or B. Uh, the employee's acts or omissions were with malicious purpose, in bad faith, or in wanton or reckless manner. Uh, now there's another section there, C, or subsection C, um, and it goes on, you can read for yourself, but I want to just focus on those two parts right there. Specifically, uh, subsection B, where it states, and I quote, the employee's acts or omissions were in malicious purpose were with malicious purpose, in bad faith, or in a wanton or reckless manner. Now, basically what they had done to me, uh, not only was it in bad faith, it was it had malicious purpose, um, and it was in a reckless manner because of the fact that they were ignoring their own responsibilities. Um... They were ignoring their own duties and responsibilities established by the state that I was wanting them to follow. And that instead of doing that, uh, they came at me. So, just like in the municipal court, when I exposed Sean Thomas Porter uh, for using fraudulent affidavits, and uh, that may have been the case where I argued the jurisdiction as well. Um, yeah, that case was thrown out. And I, it's probably because the prosecutor in that case uh, realized that that particular detective or uh, public servant, rather, I don't even, he, he, doesn't, um, he doesn't need to be called detective. He's a public servant, so we'll just leave it at that. Um, yeah, it was in bad faith with a malicious malicious purpose and uh, with a reckless manner because not only the issue about the affidavit, but the issue with the fact that the detective didn't bother to uh, perform a proper investigation. Just like in all the other situations when uh, their idea of investigating is figuring out which pieces of the puzzle fit to their scheme, not the actual, you know, what the puzzle is supposed to look like. Um, they just, you know, force pieces together and say, oh, well, you know, it kind of fits. <laughs> but in this situation here, any of these public officials, these uh, public servants, the prosecutors, the uh, detectives, um, the lawyers, the attorneys, the quote-unquote judges or magistrates, all of these people should have had the, you know, the, the wherewithal to realize that what they were being a part of, what they were condoning, what they actually conspired to allow and to be part of and to enforce against me was a color of law action to deprive me of my rights. And it was in bad faith and with a malicious purpose to silence me and to essentially run me out of town. Um, I mean, here it's 2023 now, but at the time it was 2021, so 
uh, you know, I, I thought we had gotten to a point to where this was, um, uh, not happening anymore, but I guess, you know, it doesn't matter what your background is or where you come from, if you're a combat veteran or, or not, uh, it seems like most of these, uh, public servants would prefer to have the lower IQ, lower intelligent types that, uh, you know, are always out in the middle of the night, uh, getting in trouble and, uh, doing God knows what, um, or spreading poison, you know, throughout the neighborhoods. But anyways, you know, it seems like they would rather have those types of, of people that just want to degrade society, uh, cause they can parasite off of those people. They're not intelligent enough to, you know, think for themselves or get themselves out of the trap. They just stay in it. But, you know, when there's no accountability, when they're allowed to do whatever they want, which isn't according to the law, but that's because the prosecutors refuse to uh, uh, file charges or, uh, or actually bring charges, official charges against them. Just like when I filed the civil lawsuit in the county court. It was dismissed because they, if I remember correctly, I think they used this as a as an excuse, this particular law, uh, for the defenses and immunities. But what they failed to consider or wanted, you know, willfully ignored, was the fact that these people were doing it uh, in bad faith and with a malicious purpose. Uh, and ignoring all of that doesn't give them the, the right to trample my rights. Um, at this point, the only reason they're allowed to do it is because they're an overwhelming force and I'm not powerful enough by myself. I mean, even if I had a small army, I wouldn't be powerful enough, but that would be tantamount to treason trying to overthrow the government. I'm not looking to do that. Uh, but to arrest these people, obviously there's no... Uh, agencies that are going to be willing to to do that. Um, I've made every attempt to make the quote unquote authorities that uh, would be you know uh, in charge of this sort this type of uh, situation to uh, arrest these people. I've I've made them aware of the situation. I've supplied them with affidavits. But I guess you know maybe they don't know what an affidavit is either. Kind of like Michael Hughes and. Uh, apparently Ronald Welch in the uh, Muskingum County Prosecutor's Office in uh, Zanesville, Ohio, the police detectives there, and even the law director's office, apparently none of them know what an affidavit actually is or isn't. Apparently they're just playing make-believe and they'll accept any piece of paper. Isn't that interesting? Yet they run around and, uh, you know, charge people with frivolous so-called crimes, and here they are committed some of the most egregious crimes against people, uh, against the rights of people, um, you know, effectively being a uh, safety concern for the community. You know, and here we thought that they, you know, public safety was supposed to keep the public safe. Well, apparently they've, they're, they're so incompetent that they're not only really not doing that, but they're a safety concern for the community, for the public. So I, I don't know how they got that backwards. Um, but maybe somebody, you know, one of these quote unquote professionals should, uh, you know, sit some of these people down and, you know, maybe give them a, uh, a, a psychological evaluation to figure out why they can't uh, pay attention, why they can't do the right thing, you know, is it just because there's no accountability, or is it because these people are just power hungry, uh, maybe they weren't loved enough as a child, or something, and maybe they were bullied, and now they've found a, a position where they can just exert force, uh, unrelenting force on people, and force people to submit to their will, whether it's justified or not, uh, because they can, and because the prosecutor's office isn't going to charge them, obviously, they're going to let it slide, even though it's against the law for the prosecutors to do that. That's See, that's nepotism. 
when the law requires people to be held accountable, that's why there's exceptions like the immunity, uh, the code for immunity. It says, unless one of these apply, and it gives a, a, a three examples, uh, and then goes on. So they, at any given point in time, one, any one of these incompetent public servants could have said, you know what, wait a minute, you know, this is in bad faith. They're, they're ignoring their responsibilities. They're, uh, attacking this man to silence him, to prevent him from actually getting a resolution or a, uh, reconciliation in the situation to be able to enjoy his property because that's all he wanted. None of them bothered to, to take a step back and think about that. No, they were just out for blood. They was they were just sharks in the water waiting, waiting for, you know, feeding. It was feeding time. That's not what the system is supposed to be. These incompetent public servants, these idiots have perverted the system and have, have uh, manipulated and bent it to their will to extort and uh, abuse and terrorize and, and so on and so forth uh, people and their property and, and to profit from that. So you read it for yourself. But there's been several other instances where I suspect nepotism. And now this is another glaring elephant in the room with nepotism written all over it. Showing that these people are working together. They're colluding. They're, they're conspiring together to not hold each other accountable, but to hold we the people, to hold me, a combat veteran, to a higher standard than what they're willing to hold themselves to. And for me to fix that, I've got to figure out the magic word to tell the court to fix it. Because apparently that's what it is. It's the, it's the age-old game, the playground game of figure the magic word. If you can tell me the magic word, you get the prize. If you can tell me the magic word, you get your rights back. If you can tell me the magic word, you get to be free of all this. But if you don't know what the magic word is, so sorry. That, that's all this is. It's a, it's a damn child's game. That's what they turn the courts into. It has nothing to do with truth. It has nothing to do with integrity. It has nothing to do with honor. It has everything to do with these people just want to exert their will over others and, and get away with it because they, they can. They're working together. There's obviously no other agencies, no other people in any position that the law allows to go in and arrest these people. There's no none of these other people that are willing to do that, to put their job on the line, to... Uh, you know, just do their damn job. But I guess, you know, I mean, it's hard to say if this information is correct or not with all the propaganda allowed to be used in the general public, according to the, um, the smith Munt Act. But it's just hard to say what's, what's true. <clears throat> And now, uh, you know, if you dig a little bit, like an onion, you start peeling back the layers and find out that there's so many bad layers. And at some point, something's got to give. Either this this country, the whatever we want to consider this to be, characterize it as. Uh, will completely and utterly fail and fall and will be no different than a th third world country, a, a, a shithole that's in a squalor where uh, people are just destitute and no, uh, no real opportunity. But that's up to you all. See, if you all would stop being so goddamn stupid and rejecting what I'm saying and uh, waiting for me to figure it out. If you all would actually cooperate and, you know, work with me. You know, what's the saying? One can chase a thousand, two can chase ten thousand. Now, I'm not necessarily asking for help, but I'm just saying. Got all, all these people, all these comments, 
good and bad. Mostly bad. Because it seems like people would rather just let everything get destroyed. But, I mean, that's the, the cowardly thing to do. You know, it's the easy way out. So, you gotta ask yourself, where's your backbone? Do you even have one? I'm not talking about your actual spine, dummy. But, the real question is, is it actual qualified immunity or is it nepotism? Well, from my perspective and what I'm reading and what, I'm, what I've experienced is it's nepotism because they're ignoring the law, allowing the uh, bad faith actions, the malicious intentions, the malicious actions of these public servants against somebody like myself. So that way they can profit from it. And they can also exact the uh, end result, which was, I guess, to silence me and run me out of town. For whatever reason, because I guess they don't like, you know, um, responsible people. I guess they don't like combat veterans. I guess, I don't know. I mean, who, who knows? Maybe if you're not inbred enough, you, you, they don't like you there. You gotta, you gotta be inbred just enough to be, you know, part of their clan, I guess. Who knows? I mean, I could guess and presume all I want, but it, it'll never make any sense because I'm not retarded enough. Excuse my language. don't want to make anybody offended. I'm not retarded enough to understand why it is that they do what they do because it lacks all common sense and logic and all it looks like to me using common sense and logic is uh, nepotism fraud conspiracy collusion coercion racketeering then the list goes on and on and on and if they had an ounce of honor and integrity in themselves They would, at the very least, uh, quit their jobs, expose themselves, admit, admit their failures. But they won't, because then they'd have to fix all the wrongs that they've done for God knows how long. All the people that they've sent away to prison that they shouldn't have. Because they didn't do it right. They didn't do it by the book. They just half-assed it. And because there's no accountability, well... You know, now we have a situation where they should, but they won't, because they don't have to. Like in my situation, should I really have to dig and dig and dig and figure all this out and, and figure out how to play the damn game just to get them to do what they were supposed to do to begin with? Um, you know, that kind of goes against the idea of law and... I, I, there's times I really don't even know where to go. Uh, there's times when I want to speak about things or, or bring things to you all's attention, but I don't think you all really give a shit. I think you all are happy with your TikTok. I think you're happy with your mainstream media. I think you're happy with your Twitter and your Facebook. and I think you're happy with your bullshit. And as long as it doesn't affect you personally and show up on your doorstep, you're okay. When it does, well, maybe then you'll start paying attention. But, you know, probably not, because then you'll just reach out to somebody else to have them handle it for you, because you're too incompetent to handle it for yourself. Like most of these people that just run to an attorney when some asshole tyrant throws some trumped-up false charges at them, and then they got to, you know, run through the gauntlet and figure out how to play the game. Well, they don't want to do all that. So they... They have mommy or daddy attorney take care of it for them. Just to realize that they're giving up all their rights and letting someone else speak for them. And they're never going to truly get what they want or what they deserve. They're never going to get their rights because they've given it up to somebody else, to some shyster attorney. See, that's the other thing too. How about the public pretender, Keith Edwards? This asshat claims to be a, a Marine Claims to be a, a veteran. I can't remember if he served in, in uh, combat at all, but it doesn't matter. I mean, this, this fucking idiot, uh, I mean, what do you expect from a jarhead, right? Just shit for brains. 
So this guy is standing there in the court, conspiring with the court, saying he's a Marine, tell me he's a Marine on the, you know, in, in, in other conversations. Uh, swearing out to uphold the Constitution at one point in his life, probably more than once, uh, and now is standing in a court conspiring against a fellow veteran, supposedly, uh, to deprive me of my rights. Because instead of identifying the failures of the court and the failure of, uh, failures of the, the court officials and law enforcement, he stood there wanting to play the game with them. So, what kind of fucking traitor is that, right? But what do you expect when these people have shit for brains? That's what they do. They play this game. They find themselves in a situation. I mean, looking at the guy, I don't even know how the fuck he was a Marine anyways, but that goes besides the point. Uh, they, they put themselves in situations or they get themselves into situations where they can take advantage and use that power to hurt other people. Like I said, maybe he wasn't you know hugged enough as a child. Maybe uh, he was bullied. That's, that'd be my guess, is he was probably bullied a lot as a child. He probably went to the Marine Corps thinking he would, you know, try to make something of himself and ended up being some uh, desk jockey pushing pencils somewhere, probably some, you know, supply or something like that, something never really doing anything, just, uh, you know, I guess being part of the system but not really, you know, uh, sacrificing anything really. So, uh you know, then he probably, like, stubs his toe, gets a medical discharge, and then uh, now he goes around saying he's a Marine and uh, then plays this game in the courts to steal people's rights, ignoring his oaths, ignoring his responsibilities and duties, ignoring all of that. Standing there, being part of destroying the, the rule of law in the country, the Constitution, everything that he swore to uphold, and to, to defend the people for crying out loud. Well, he, he's part of that. He's part of destroying the very thing that he swore an oath to, to, to defend and to uphold. So that's how incompetent, that's how stupid these people are. Is they can't even see that their actions are exactly opposite of what they're supposed to be. And not only in the municipal court, with all of these bad faith actors, prosecutors, uh, attorneys, and uh, public servants, but in the county court as well. They're so stupid and incompetent, apparently, that they don't know the difference between an actual affidavit and a false affidavit. And apparently they'll accept anything and call it an affidavit, and they'll run with it. Because, hey, who's going to hold them accountable, right? Who's going to check it? And, I mean, even if an attorney fights it, they're working with the court anyways. They're all attorneys. They're all part of the Bar Association. It's all nepotism. They're going to they're gonna do something that's going to, you know, maybe lessen the charges, lessen the, the repercussions for the, for the fraudulent charges. You know, maybe give them a plea deal, but it still goes on the record. All this bullshit, nonsense. Just destroying people's lives because they don't give a fuck about the, the repercussions. They don't give a fuck if you have to walk away from your property because you can't physically stay there because the public servants have made you fear for your, your safety being there because they could show up at any time and do God knows what. And they wouldn't be held accountable for it. They could justify it by saying whatever they want. That's why I'm still shocked that they didn't just shoot me and kill me when they arrested me back in June of 2021. Because they could have, and hell, nobody would have said anything different. They could have mowed me down with a hundred rounds, and none of you would have said a goddamn thing, and fucking, you know, every one of you probably would have fucking supported them, and say, hey, great job, blue line fucking heroes. Not realizing that you're supporting a, what I see as a terrorist organization. It's not what it was meant to be. That's what they've turned it into. They've perverted the original idea. So you do it with you. You do with the information what you want. And I'll do with the information what I want. But if you don't like the truth, if you don't like the information that I'm presenting, then you can go fuck yourself. Because quite frankly, I'm, I'm sick and tired of entertaining idiots 
and wasting my fucking time dealing with dumbass comments. And it, it sets up a situation where even people that want to uh, uh, submit a, a positive comment don't because they don't want to get trolled by the fucking asshats that are putting all the dumb fucking comments on there talking shit about me saying I don't, you know, he, he isn't uh, mental, you know, whatever the fuck you guys say. I can't even, I can't even recite it because it doesn't even make sense half the time. Saying shit like I need a psychological evalu evaluation. Really? I think you do. The fact that y you don't want to read the shit that I'm reading, you don't want to comprehend the shit that I'm reading and talking about. And formulate your own opinion. No, you just want to parrot some other fucking mommy or daddy's opinion. And tell me I'm wrong. Because if you don't, your mommy and daddy's not going to be so favorable towards you. Or maybe you won't get a fucking cookie or whatever. Who knows? It's fucking ridiculous. And for people to, to act like this is a goddamn game... Destroying people's lives, destroying our country. What the fuck is wrong with you people? Just think of all the energy and effort that's put behind all this negative, uh, evil, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Bad shit that these bad faith actor public servants do that, hell, even, even criminals, what we call criminals. The people that steal and, uh... You know, cause harm scammers and shit like that. All the effort people put behind hacking into computer systems and all that shit just to steal from... Think if, if even half of the effort put into that kind of shit was put into, into positive things, this whole fucking world would change overnight. But people would rather fucking hustle other people. It, it's it's almost like... Well, it's it's... What is that saying? Uh, something like stolen bread is sweeter than, uh, I can't remember the saying, but anyways, it, you may know what I'm, what I'm referring to, I can't remember the saying off the top of my head, but maybe that's what it is, is people just, they, they just want the rush, they want the feeling of excitement that it, that comes from hurting other people, but that's extreme, well, I don't even know where to begin with that, but. That's a danger to society, to allow this kind of mindset, to just devour other people, to parasite off other people. You know, but what do you expect when the quote-unquote powers that be have been you know, giving handouts to certain groups of, in society for so long that they're so used to it that when they stop getting the handouts, they freak out and just destroy everything, and then now they demand handouts. And not just handouts, they demand a luxurious life because they think they deserve it. Fuck everybody else. Pay me because this, that, and the other thing. No, that's not how it works. You gotta earn it. So I've kind of gotten off topic, but to bring it back around, and it doesn't take a genius to, to figure it out, if the law gives exceptions to immunity, and this is what they are supposed to be following and abiding by and bound to, and they're not, then they're in the wrong. But who's going to hold them accountable if it's just me? See, you've got to choose. Who do you want? Do you want to? Do you want to go to a third world country? Do you want to be a socialist uh, dictatorship? Do you want to be a communist dictatorship? I mean, look at look at history. At least what we're told about history. If half of that's true, then these situations and, and scenarios that people seem to be wanting to take our country to is extremely hazardous for humanity, for people, which goes directly against the Constitution, which is the, the contract, the treaty, the whatever you want to consider it, the document that establishes 
a boundary. This is what the public servants can and can't do. These are the rights of the people. Not because the document says so, but because they're uh, given to us by our creator. And the document simply identifies it. It's, it's the instrument that, um, that identifies the, the fact that we have rights that are given to us by our creator. I mean, just, just a simple fact that things like the Second Amendment, I mean, all day long I see these stupid-ass uh, articles about, um, from attorneys about uh, different gun laws and stuff like that. I mean, it's pretty simple. If, if we were being honest with ourselves, the Second Amendment, it says, shall not be infringed. It gives no exceptions. It gives no caveats. It gives nothing. It just says, shall not, well, I mean, it obviously says a few other words, but it also says, shall not be infringed. Yet they do it all day long in the courts. They have come up with ways to convince the people that there's certain instances that are necessary. But you know what's funny? In these instances that they think it's necessary and they utilize it, has it ever stopped those people from getting guns? I mean... You hear stories all day long. I do anyways. I see the videos. I see the body-worn cameras of the officers that are responding to uh, a robbery or an assault or a shooting or something. And uh, it, it's a, a felon with an illegal gun, a, 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 a ghost gun or whatever, they want, a stolen gun or whatever. So isn't that funny? The, the laws don't actually stop the activity and even though the system is profiting off of that law it's not doing anything to actually protect the people or the public because what they've done instead is they've created laws to take guns away from law-abiding people like myself like what they've done because I called and wanted peace and quiet in my house they decided to strip me of my rights and take my property and Tell me I can't have a firearm or own a firearm or, or purchase a firearm ever again, I guess. Or until they they tell me it's okay or whatever the hell they, they're, they're saying. Because apparently they, they have some wacky ideas about the law that aren't according to the actual laws that they're supposed to be following. You know, like, you know, regarding affidavits and, uh, you know, the definitions of affidavits and stuff like that and what they actually are and, um, and the responsibilities too. But here I am, not only fighting against these people that are, are uh, stripping me of my rights and property, threatening my life, and doing all this to profit and to, to get personal satisfaction, because I guess that's probably the other part, too, is not only are they profiting from it, but it's probably personal also, because I made it a personal issue, I guess, for them. They took it personally because uh, I was explaining their actions, the fact that they're acting incompetently. So I guess they took it personally, took it out on me, and showed me how incompetent they are. You know, they're just competent enough to make it look like, you know, somebody's home. The lights are on, but, you know, nobody's home. <laughs> they can go through the actions, but they don't pay attention to what they're doing. So they end up doing the wrong thing. They end up holding, you know, the wrong person accountable or whatever. You know, just think if they would have applied that effort that they took towards, you know, attacking me and terrorizing me. Just think if they would have put that effort forth uh, going after the business owners and operators and just forcing them to stop production at night or use equipment that isn't, no isn't loud and noisy, that doesn't disturb the peace. I mean, how difficult would that have been? That probably would have been a, a simple, you know, maybe two or three hearing court case. Probably wouldn't have taken a whole lot. Maybe a few, you know, get a few companies out there to, to take some audio samples and do a little, uh, uh, what's it called, a, uh, a, a noise assessment. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, it wouldn't have taken long to do that at all. But no, they, they made every excuse under the sun to not do it. 
And at one point, they tried to force me to sign some document that they never showed me. I don't know what in the hell they were trying to get me to sign. Who knows? Because these idiots obviously don't know what, uh, you know, factual, real, true documents are like affidavits. So who knows? It was probably, you know, some contract trying to, you know, trick me into some contract to, you know, steal my rights further or just steal the property from me. Who knows what they would have tried to get me to sign. But anyways, I'm digressing. Um, yeah, so they wanted me to sign some documents so they could put an instrument uh, in my house to measure the noise. But they were, they were, first of all, they were wanting to put the instrument in a place where it wouldn't have measured the noise properly. And second of all, the instrument that they wanted to put in my house when I talked to the, uh, the company that was going to contract to do it, uh, the operator, he showed me the instrument. He, he, I think he emailed or texted me the information about the, um, uh, the piece of equipment. And the piece of equipment that they wanted to put in my house wasn't even capable of picking up the sounds that I was hearing. So they wanted to put this piece of equipment in my house just for it to pick up nothing, for them to say, hey, nothing's there, you're hearing shit. <laughs> you see how they do it? They trust the science, right? Hey, we did an experiment. Doesn't doesn't matter if we didn't do the experiment right. We just we did an experiment. So, you know, therefore we're the experts, so listen to us. That's how fucking dumb these people are. But what's even more fascinating and, and disturbing to me is that people like you uh believe the shit that they spout and say. And will believe them over somebody like me. Because you think you should trust them more, or you think because you don't know anything about these people other than that they're public servants, and oh, well, they've served all uh, so many years and uh, done this and that. Like, give me a break. They haven't served anything. They've sat behind a desk, they pushed pencils, uh, you know, they found ways to obviously deprive people of their rights, whether it's, you know, directly, individually property rights, what have you. I mean, from my experience, that seems to be the case. So I can, it's safe for me to say that or, you know, conjecture that. So, you know, I guess that might be a, a tough job, you know, spending years, decades in, in public service, training yourself or getting trained on how to not do a good job. Because most of these people tout how, oh, I'm, I've been, you know, I've been doing this for 20 years. Like, Really? It should show. If you've been doing it for 20 years, you should know how to do your job and do it well. If you've been doing it for 20 years, you should know some of the basics. Like, I st I'm going to have to get a hold of a, of a law school and, and talk to them about affidavits and ask them, in, as far as the curriculums are concerned, the general curriculums, if, you know, at what point in, the, in a law school education is an individual exposed to the information about affidavits? Because I would think that would be one of the very first things, or early on, one of the, the uh, first things, if you will, that uh, that would be taught. Because of the fact that, as far as I'm aware, every court case is based on affidavits. So, if that's the case, and that's probably one of the most important documents for any attorney is an affidavit. Because if they don't have an affidavit, then they essentially have no case. So how can someone be an assistant prosecutor or the actual head prosecutor? Because I'm pretty sure I saw him walking around the courtroom several times. So he was he was around the area. He was looking over Michael Hughes' shoulder. And, you know, that was probably early on. I'm not sure when Michael Hughes got hired by the... Uh, prosecutor's office or appointed or whatever. I don't know how he gets that position necessarily as an assistant, but, um, you know, Ronald Welch should be fully aware of what his assistants are doing. Maybe not, you know, in the moment, but after the fact, he should be following up. That's part of his job. I, I mean, I would assume he's got all these assistants under him handling all these cases. I would assume that it's his job to manage the assistants and to effectively or essentially, uh, be quality control to audit their cases, audit the paperwork and so on and so forth. And if he's letting that shit slide, well, he's just as guilty as Michael Hughes of committing fraud. 
because he allowed it. Under his watch, he was the principal of that office, the head prosecutor, and he let that happen. And after I made him aware of the fact, of course, it's crickets. No phone call back, no communications, no, hey, I apologize that happened. You know, what, what can we do to make it right? No, it's how, let's, let's probably figure out what we can do to sweep this under the rug and keep everybody from knowing about it. And, uh, you know, let's do whatever we can to not tarnish our reputation because it's not that it's uh, not in need of being tarnished. It's because you want to hide the fact that you have a tarnished reputation. You want to whitewash yourself. That's, but that's just a fraud, isn't it? But how do these people get appointed or elected? Well, my guess is it probably goes back to like what I was talking about, the you know, the, the secret societies, the, the brotherhoods, the groups, the collectivism where they get one good person from their group to go run for that office and then they all vote for it for that one. And they manipulate the the system to their will so that way they can further manipulate the system. I mean, that's what it looks like to me. And I don't know necessarily if it's just part of the families or if it's the you know generational families in these institutions or in these uh, uh, societies that... Uh, you know, because the family has been in the society for so long, generationally, not only are they have they been in the society, but simultaneously they've been in public service and, and those types of uh, positions and have uh, had like a legacy, if you will, of their family in those positions. And they've used that to, to bend, obviously, like what I've experienced. You know, they try to set a precedent like, hey, let's not do the, what the law requires us to do let's let's set a precedent in court that will prevent us from having to do that responsibility or or, or duty ever again that i think that's what they how they think and maybe it's not intentional maybe it's not conscience maybe it's subconscious i don't know i mean they seem to know what they're doing um and it isn't until somebody calls them out on it that they're like oh i'm sorry i didn't realize i did that you know, you hear Michael Hughes in the conversation, acting all shocked like he didn't know what he did. I mean, how stupid can you be? That'd be like a manager of McDonald's not knowing how to make a Big Mac. That's pretty dumb. How does a person get to be a manager of McDonald's and not know how to make a Big Mac? So these are the people that are running the system. These are the people that, you know, in all these positions and places of so-called authority, you know, that are destroying everything from what I see. And there's very few of us like myself that are willing to stand up and say enough is enough. No, uh, I, I've had it. I'm, I'm not entertaining this anymore. It's not fun. You know, it's not a game. You know, this is serious. It's time to grow the fuck up. So, you read the shit yourself. I gave you the uh, Ohio Revised Code. I'll give it again, just in case, because I know some of you are just dense. So, it's Ohio Revised Code 2744.03. It's called Defenses Hyphen Immunities. And if you scroll down to, it is, uh, it's section A, subsection 6, uh, divisions A and B. And if you scroll down, if you don't know what any of that means, just go to that, type in Ohio Revised Code, uh, what did I say, 2744.03. Uh, and then just read the whole damn thing. But you'll read, you'll see the A comes first, you know, A, B, C, D, kind of like the alphabet. Um, and then you'll see the numbers that are uh, a subdivision of that A or B or C or what have you. So 
Just go read it for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Don't reject what I say because you're an idiot and you don't want to go read it for yourself. And then you just want to reject what I said because you don't like it or because it makes you feel uncomfortable or because whatever. I don't care. Just, just go read it. Go read it and then think about why you're such an idiot. And, uh, yeah, maybe at some point we can work together to uh, make this a better place for all of us and for future generations. But, you know, if you all just want to sit there and judge me, if you all just want to sit there and uh, do nothing, wait for me to do it for you, then, uh, yeah, we're either not going to get there or it's going to take a really long time. So, uh, yeah, you choose. It's up to you. But, uh, yeah, keep your head up.